guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Warframe video where today we are going to be talking about syndicates. Now someone recently asked me how I was able to rank up four syndicates to max rank. As you can see, one of them isn't quite max rank, but we're nearly there. We're going to be there basically tomorrow. Um, so I thought I'd just kind of run through the basics to syndicates, how the um the standing with them works how you farm the standing with them and which syndicates you should maybe start with if you're a beginner to the game and what kind of benefits they provide so the rewards you know all that good stuff we're going to go through all of that today um and yeah discuss which syndicates work well together which ones you should perhaps avoid um in terms of pledging yourself to so for those of you who don't know what pledging is if you're new in Warframe, there are six main syndicates, and each of them have their own set of rewards, which include augment mods, weapon parts, weapons themselves, and you can affiliate yourself with one of them by, you know, pledging. And by pledging them, ple pledging yourself to them, during missions, a certain percentage of the affinity that you gain, so the XP in Warframe, a certain percentage of that will also go towards uh, your syndicates. So we're just going to run through what the syndicates are good for, which ones, you know, I've chosen to go with and why, and then we'll talk about a bit later on, you know, the kind of strategy to getting four ranked up, because there is some useful benefits to being able to do this. It's a bit tricky to maintain it, but if you're a player who's perhaps trying to min-max, then maybe this will be up your street. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so I don't want to, you know, go on and on and on about this for ages because there's quite a lot that I can talk about here between the different syndicates. But essentially what you need to know is that these six are divided into two sets of three. That's what you want to picture it as. So the two sets of three are the parent sequence, Red Veil and New Loka, and Cephalon Suda, Arbitus of Hexus and Steel Meridian. If you choose to go with two syndicates on either side of this, kind of groupings then you will seriously impact yourself when you come to maybe decide to want three syndicates maxed out or even four um so let me just kind of explain that briefly using an example so i am for example right now pledged with red veil now you can see that red veil are allied with steel meridian but they are enemies with cephalon suda and arbiters of hexus they are neutral with parent sequence and new loka which means that if i was to do a mission whilst i was pledged to Red Veil, vale, I would not gain or lose any standing with the parent sequence or New Loka. Same as can be said if I was to run a mission as New Loka, pledged to New Loka, or pledged to parent sequence, I would gain no standing, nor would I lose any standing with Red Veil. Vale. So these three work quite well together because there is no way that I can pick any one of these three and it will impact the standing of the other. I can just rank them up to maximum and not worry about these other three. And it works the same on this side. So you can see here Arbiters of Hexus and Cephalon Suda, they're allied together, but they are neutral with Steel Meridian and Steel Meridian is neutral with them. So these three, they can be ranked up together without having to worry about impacting on each other. A lot of uh, newer players, and myself included when I first started this, will first fall into the trap of looking at maybe one uh, of these kind of pairs and then picking their immediate ally and just focusing on maxing both of those out. Now that becomes a bit of a problem. And a lot of the people that I speak to, particularly my clan, end up going with just Red Veil vale and Steel Meridian. So they'll do the syndicate missions daily for both of these to get their standing a bit higher. But what you'll notice is if I was to do Red Veil, vale, the syndicate missions, I would lose standing with Arbiters of Hexus and Cephalon Suda. And if I was to do the same with Steel Meridian, I would then end up losing standing with the parent sequence and New Loka. So the only syndicates that I would have ranked up are Steel Meridian and Red Veil, vale, which would allow me only access to the rewards from those two syndicates. Whereas if I went for this bunch of three or this bunch of three, I could get access to three different shops at the same time if I was to max each of them out. So that's the kind of general gist that you want to get around when you first decide what syndicates you are picking. Either pick the grouping of Steel Meridian, Arbiters of Hexus, or Cephalon Suda, these three, or pick the parent sequence Red Veil vale and New Loka. So that's the general idea when you're trying to rank up syndicates and you get three, at least three of them, to max rank. Before we move on to kind of the, you know, complexities of getting a fourth ranked up, 
let's just go into how we are going to farm the standing each day for these and it's extremely in fact it's exactly the same as my focus farming guide however i'm going to put a bit of a spin on it this time around considering my previous video last week we looked at uh, zors exodia contagion zors so we're going to do a similar version to that but we're going to use an exodia contagion zor and show you how you can gain affinity very very quickly unfortunately today when i'm recording this my affinity is already maxed out my standing is already maxed out with all of these uh, syndicates that i want so we're going to be looking at kind of focus rather than that because you guys will be able to see me gaining focus which is essentially the same works on the same mechanics as gaining affinity so let's just quickly hop into uh, the build that i'm going to be using to farm up the standing for these syndicates if you wanted to fully focus on farming them bear in mind that obviously you're going to get this kind of stuff just passively from doing normal missions so farm however you want but if you do want to just hardcore farm the syndicate standing each day and nothing else for example then hopefully this next build will be of use to you all right guys so this is going to be a very similar build as i said to our focus farming guide uh with one specific difference which is that we are going to be using our exodia zor from last week to clear out the enemies and there's an important reason for doing this that is because we compare it with nariman's affinity spike if you haven't seen my focus farming guide you can do affinity farming or focus farming with a melee weapon as it grants you an additional 45 percent melee affinity so that's a really important tool uh, to pair with this. Um, and if you haven't seen my video last week about the Exodia Contagion Zors and how they work and how to build them, go and have a look at that. I would highly recommend doing so. There are a few key differences between this Banshee build and the one that I use in my focus farming guide as this one has basically been upgraded. So we've thrown an Orokin reactor on here and we've essentially upped the strength a bit. We've upped the duration and I've also put on preparation and primed flow here so that we have a nice starting energy pool. I've also got arcane strike to pair with our Zor so that we can throw more and we can throw faster. And I've got arcane energize just so that our energy pool does remain nice and high. This probably isn't necessary to be honest given the amount of energy that we are starting with. And if you do not have energize and you perhaps are struggling with energy with this build just go ahead and throw on you know some um, some streamline mods or efficiency mods rather than perhaps alka message or something like that should do the trick just fine uh, and then our zor build if you perhaps really are against going and watching my video last week this is what we're running with a river mod is really not necessary for this build whatsoever it's complete overkill exodia contagion does a stupid amount of damage as it is so you do not need a river mod to do this nor do you need half the mods that i've got on here you can get away with a much 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 cheaper build to do this farm so yeah we are going to be doing this uh, as you can see i've got a greater Ma greater madurai lens on both my banshee prime and my exodia zor here to demonstrate kind of the level of affinity gain that we are going to be getting and i'll explain that once we get into the mission itself but yeah essentially the only other tool that perhaps you want to be running here is your smita gavat if you have one the smita gavat has a chance every 28 seconds or 27 seconds to proc a double affinity booster which as it sounds is going to double the affinity and therefore the standing that we're going to get with our syndicates uh, and you can increase the time length of that charm using tech enhance up to 155 seconds so yeah a really nice tool that can seriously speed up your runs if you get a bit lucky um, so let's jump into the mission and then we'll explain kind of the levels of affinity that you're going to be seeing and how it all works all right guys so we're just about to jump into uh, adaro on sedna which is the mission that i used in my focus farming guide video so like i said if you haven't seen that video i would recommend you go and have a look at it as it's going to detail a bit more of what's going on here really but essentially i just want to cover off a couple of calculations that are going to be important for you guys understanding how you're actually going to be farming standing during this so first and foremost as we said we have two greater madurai lenses on our build right now one on our banshee and one on our weapon now a greater lens is going to convert 1.75 percent of the excess affinity that we get in this mission into focus now 1.75 percent is very small and it's also worth noting that from affinity spike on the nariman skill tree which we discussed that's going to gain any affinity that goes to our weapon an extra 45 percent focus so 
bear that in mind it's still very small numbers we're around 1.75 percent to 2.5 percent in the at the end of the day it's very small so affinity wise we're going to be getting a set amount of affinity during this mission 1.75 percent to 2.5 percent of that is going to be transferred into focus during this now obviously that's not the same as standing and as i said unfortunately the day that i found time to record this i've already maxed out all of my standing with my syndicates so poor planning by me but hopefully this is going to serve my point so when it comes to transferring affinity into standing there is a direct transfer rate of 15 percent. so 15 percent of any affinity not even excess affinity and by excess affinity i mean that's affinity that's not going towards leveling up a weapon so just any affinity in general you can be ranking up weapons at the same time as getting standing um and 15 percent of that affinity is going to be converted into standing for whichever syndicate you are pledged to and then you know for the syndicate that's getting 50 percent your ally they'll get 7.5 percent that's the general gist of things so hopefully this will demonstrate that you are quite easily able to max out your syndicates in this one mission one run of this mission very very quickly and yeah to kind of prove that point i just want to say that your daily standing cap for a syndicate let's say i use my account as an example here i'm rank 31 will be i believe it's 1600 i could be wrong no, 16,000. sorry so the base daily standing cap is 16,000. That then gets an additional 500 standing points depending on your mastery rank. So my mastery rank is 31. So 500 times 31 is 15,500. So my daily standing cap right now is 31,500. 16,000 plus that 15,500 from my mastery rank. So the most I can possibly get with my pledged syndicate standing wise is 31,000. 500 now that's important to note because we're going to be getting way more of that in focus and if you remember what i said 15 percent of the affinity we get is going to be standing and less than 2.5 percent is going to end up being focus so you know transfer it up however you want we're going to be getting an insane amount so without further ado let's jump into adaro and see what kind of numbers we get on focus and then that should prove that this is very 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 good at farming standing all right, guys, so we're in our mission. We're going to be doing what we did in our focus guide, but with our Exodia Contagion Zor. So we're going to run up, use our Zor to just kind of blow everyone up. Bear in mind that you can get staggered using the Zor. However, considering you're using melee, you often actually block the, uh, the throw, which is quite useful. Uh, but you can see in the top right-hand corner there, oh, not anymore because we just ruined it, but... You do get a 500% stealth affinity bonus for killing enemies. There you go. We're up to 200% now because we killed two in a row. Uh, for, yeah, killing enemies uh, without their knowledge of you being there. Stealth kills. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to run around. We are going to stealth kill as many enemies as possible during this mission. And if we go ahead and just get our stealth kill back up to 500%. There we go. No, oh, we lost it again. I'm going to keep going for a bit, guys. Uh, and yeah, we'll take a look at what our our focus gets up to. I'm going to avoid actually picking up any of the, uh, the focus tokens, like that one that just came up. What those focus tokens do will increase our focus gain by eight times. Um, so I'm actually going to leave that alone because I want a more... Uh, direct kind of correlation where I can just say this was around 2.5%. So yeah, let's run through the mission and see what we end up with at the end. Okay guys, so over 3 minutes and 35 seconds without picking up a single focus multiplier token, we managed to gain basically 20,000 standing. And you can see how that split we got. Uh, bear with. Da -da 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 -da, let that load. We got 7,940 on our Banshee Prime and 11,511 on our Exodia Zor, which I would be willing to bet is about 45% more than 7,940, which we got obviously from our Affinity Spike on Narriman. Now, if you remember before, my daily standing for 
steal not steal my own but you know whatever i was ranking up i could get a maximum of thirty one thousand five hundred. now what this represents is less than 2.5 percent of the affinity that i was gaining now when you gain standing you gain 15 percent so that's six times more than that so essentially in terms of standing we gained closer to 120,000 than obviously the the focus gain here which was only 20,000 now 120,000 is four times as much as i'm gonna need for max ranking my syndicate so hopefully that just goes to show you know how quickly you can max each of your syndicates that you want to max each day it is very very straightforward with this kind of build for you know the same as the focus farming build and you can use this to form your weapons as well it's very very useful for doing that so that's the general gist of how you want to rank up your syndicates you also then on top of your daily standing cap get syndicate missions in here now in here you also can pick up syndicate medallions which add to your standing cap even more i actually tend not to focus on picking those up too much as from a time perspective you actually spend a fair amount of time looking for them and it detracts from how efficient the farming is you could be using that time for much better things like farming platinum whatever else it doesn't matter but you know you can also do these if you want to you're you know you're keen to progress your syndicates a bit faster this is definitely something that you can do so yeah that's basically it for ranking up our syndicates at least so let's just talk quickly about that fourth syndicate and how if you wanted to you could max out a fourth syndicate so give me a sec all right guys so just briefly let's look at that fourth syndicate so as i said before you want to stick within whichever kind of trio of syndicates you've chosen to begin with either parent sequence red veil and new loca and cephalon suda arbiters of hexus and steel meridian and when you want to come to rank up a fourth syndicate if you do want to put in the effort you stick to those same rules you never pledge yourself outside of the trio of syndicates that you are working on now you might be wondering well how the hell then do i rank up a syndicate outside of that and the answer to that is actually quite simple if we take a look here if i was to pledge myself to red veil which i currently am i gain 50 percent affinity with steel meridian but you'll notice that i'm not going to lose anything with parent sequence and new loca if i was to pledge myself to parent sequence and new loca i would then lose something with steel meridian so with parent sequence i would lose 100 percent on steel meridian and with new loca i would lose 50 percent with steel meridian so the way to rank up steel meridian without losing standing with uh, parent sequence and new loca because obviously if i was to pledge myself to steel meridian i would then lose 100 percent with parent sequence and 50 percent with new loca and i don't want to do that so in order to avoid that we can obviously pledge ourselves with red veil and just collect the 50 percent standing with steel meridian which isn't going to bother the parent sequence and new loca because they're neutral with the red veil so that's how we're going to rank up our fourth syndicate now some of you are probably wondering now well how then do i max out these other two without losing too much for steel meridian how is it possible that i could get the max 132,000 standing with every single of one of these syndicates one of these four syndicates without then losing you know standing with one or the other and the answer to that again is kind of quite simple when you think about it so essentially you want to be focusing or prioritizing on new loca in this example the one that i'm showing here so th this trio here so with red veil we can max out steel meridian standing without bothering these two so let's say we did that we get our red veil standing up to 132,000, and then each day we get 50 percent of that so 16,000 towards maxing out steel meridian eventually steel meridian would get it to 132,000. so we have 132,000 with steel meridian and 132,000 standing with red veil now we want to come to rank up new loca and parent sequence to max so we'd start with new loca we would get our new loca up to max 132,000 standing at which point we would have lost 50 percent standing with steel meridian so our steel meridian would have gone back down to 66,000, half of 132,000, which is the max standing cap but our new loca and our red veil are now maxed out and our parent sequence is our half our parent sequence has gone up half because obviously we get 50 percent of the standing that we get when we pledge ourselves to new loca with the parent sequence 
So what we have now is the Red Veil vale, maxed out, 132,000. New Loka maxed out, 132,000. And we have Perrin Sequence and Steel Meridian at half, 66,000. So now what we need to do is we need to bring Steel Meridian back up. So once again, we're going to pledge ourselves back to Red Veil. Vale, gain back the 66,000 for Steel Meridian. So again, by pledging ourselves to Red Veil, vale, we're not going to impact on these two. So they're going to stay the same in terms of standing, but our Steel Meridian standing is going to get back up to 132,000. So what we have now after that is 132,000 with Red Veil, vale, 132,000 with New Loka, 132,000 with Steel Meridian, and our 66,000 still remaining with the parent sequence. And then all we do to max out that fourth syndicate is do the process again. We go back to pledging ourselves to New Loka, where we only lose 50% with Steel Meridian, get the remaining 50% of the parent sequence standing, so this is now up to 132,000 as well, and then we go back to Red Veil vale and remax out the Steel Meridian standing. So now we have four syndicates, all with 132,000. Now you might be wondering why, oh why, would you bother doing that? Because, you know, it's a lengthy process and you're probably going to actually lose out in the long run in terms of if you wanted to just get relic packs over time or if you wanted to, say, you know, buy weapons and sell them for platinum. It's probably not the best way to go about it. But let's, for example, say that a new Prime Warframe was about to drop. So like Hildren Prime last month or month before, I can't remember now. What a lot of players can do in this scenario is max all of these syndicates out. So you have four sources of relic packs for when Hildren Prime drops. And each relic pack is going to cost you 20,000 standing. Now with four syndicates at 132,000 standing, really you only need to get it to 120,000, you can get six relic packs each. So that's 24 relic packs across four syndicates. Um, so that comes to, you know... Uh, maths in my head 72 relics that you can unbox in one go as soon as a prime frame releases the chances are you're going to get a decent amount of relics that involve the new dropped parts that's the basis of doing this and that is the only real reason why you would do it um so yeah that's kind of the general gist i would not recommend ranking up a fourth syndicate if that is not a tactic that interests you and you're not interested in getting relic packs that way when new frames get released just sticking with the three, one of these trios is absolutely fine and you will find yourself being able to balance your standing out quite a bit better than trying to do the fourth syndicate as well. So that's kind of a little caveat that I want to add on there. You know, if you're just starting out in the game, focus on your three and then if you do at some point want to do your fourth, it's not impossible to bring it back from, you know, if you're completely dead in the water with them, such as I am with Arbiters of Hexus and Sephon Suda. You can bring it back when you want to. So just start with your three that you want to do, then move on to the fourth later on if you really want to. So yeah, that's the basis, guys. Let's uh, let's round out the video now. All right, guys. So I realize I've talked a lot during this video and there's a lot of information to take in. But just before we end here, I do want to give a quick little talk about the drops or the, you know, the rewards that each of these syndicates provide. Now, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. Obviously, each syndicate provides, you know, a smattering of augment mods. So... Uh, we can't type augment, but let's uh, let's go to one where I have unlocked them. So let's do Red Veil, for example. And we can look at Necrosis augment mods here. Um, we can see we've got Shield of Shadows, Despoil, Creeping Terrify, mods that I actually use quite a lot with my Necros builds. So when you actually come to decide which syndicates you want to pledge yourself to, have a think about the frames that you are using or the frames that you plan to use. And then take a look at the syndicates which offer the augment mods for those frames because chances are you will probably want to use at least one of them on one of your builds at some point. So it's always useful to be able to have access to those mods. Now in terms of everything else, in my opinion, and again I'm saying this is in my opinion, there's not really much else you want to worry about as the weapons, whilst they are quite good, some of them, especially things like the Ractor Dark Dagger, if you're going an Ash build, you know, teleport and stab and kill, um, they're quite powerful in that sense. But you are not going to be using them for an extended period of time. You will probably replace them with something later on down the line. Um, and there are better variants of the same weapons out there. So the Ractor Cernos has, you know, the Cernos Prime, which is arguably better than the Ractor Cernos in certain ways. 
Same with the Raptor Ballistica. There's a Ballistica Prime. Um, then if we take a look at uh, New Loka, for example, we have uh, the Sancti Tigris and the Sancti Castanus. And the Sancti Castanus are probably the best variant of that weapon in particular. There isn't a Prime variant of this weapon. But the Sancti Tigris has the Tigris Prime or Tigris Prime, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Sancti Magistar. I believe there is... Is there a Magistar Prime? No, there's not a Magistar Prime. Yeah, I'm losing my mind there. But either way, the fact of the matter is, these weapons, they don't last very long. And although they are quite good for mid-game, and they can help you out if you can get there in time. So that's the thing, right? You've got to remember that you've actually got to reach this point in the game to access these weapons, by which time you may well have already found other weapons that you prefer and that are more powerful. So don't base your syndicates on the weapons that you're going to be using, because the chances are that these weapons they're not going to be to your satisfaction when you actually come to unlock them and you might have found better weapons um, to replace them with. So do not pick your syndicates based on the weapons. Focus more on the augment mods and the frames that you like to play uh, as these are essentially going to become parts of your builds moving forward and they're going to be more important. So yeah, that's kind of all I want to say about the, uh, the different you know bits and bobs. Obviously there's Arcwing parts as well, but at the end of the day... You guys can have a look at which Arcwing weapons you think you like the sound of. In my opinion, you know, you've got things like the uh, the Larkspur Prime now, um, the Corvus Prime. There's so many different weapons. The Mausolon that comes with Void Rig. There are great Arc Gun and Arcwing, Arcwing weapon choices that don't come out of Syndicates. And you may well find again that once you've built these, you don't like them. So don't base your Syndicates on what parts or what weapons you're going to get base it on the mods and try and cover the widest variety of frames and augment mods that you possibly can when you're deciding on this so yeah that's kind of all i want to go into in terms of offerings now there is one thing i want to bring up and that is that in parent sequence you do have squad energy restores large now if you're not in a clan this might be beneficial to you a bit earlier on. You don't have to be max rank to get hold of this. I don't believe, at least. I think you can get this a bit earlier on. In a clan, you can buy a 100 times blueprint for energy restores large. But, you know, if you're not in a clan or if, well, for whatever reason, your clan hasn't researched that yet, you can access large energy restore pads quite early on if you go to parent sequence. So, again, that's another reason why I like doing it, because as an Eidolon hunter, I tend to use quite a few of these, even if I don't want to. <laughs> I just end up using them anyway. Um, so, yeah, something worth noting. But let's uh, let's round up the video, guys, because, yeah, I'm taking up way too much time. If you guys do have any kind of comments or questions or methods that you use with your syndicates that perhaps I haven't mentioned in this video, or you have questions, obviously there are other syndicate factions out there. There's Cephalon Samaris. There's all the factions on Cetus, on Fortuna, on Deimos that we haven't gone into. But obviously most of them work around their bound their separate bounty missions. And I've done bounty guides before. So, you know, you can have a look at those if you want. But yeah, we'll round out the video here, guys. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one. I'll see you later, guys.